Hello everyone and welcome back to Circus Tutorials. In today's tutorial, we're going to go over a couple fun tricks and challenges that you can learn with everyday objects in this time stuck inside. So for our first silly trick, we are going to need a toothbrush. Now when we're doing this, I would recommend using an extra toothbrush or one that you don't care about, like maybe you just bought a new one and you're throwing one away. That would be perfect for this trick. You can use your normal toothbrush that you're using, but odds are we're gonna drop it on the ground and we don't wanna use a dirty toothbrush. So if, if it is your normal toothbrush, make sure that you clean it with mouthwash or rubbing alcohol before you use it again, because we don't want anybody getting sick. So what the trick is that we're going to do, uh, if any of you have watched America's Got Talent or watched Tape Face, you've probably seen this trick. And that is spinning this toothbrush on your finger. And the way it works is we're going to use our finger, balance it, balance the toothbrush on the bristles on our finger. Then we are going to spin it around on our finger. We want to spin it the same direction that the bristles are facing. So in this case, the bristles are facing to the left. And so I'm gonna swing the bottom of it the same direction. So I'm gonna swing the bottom left and getting it started is the hardest part. Once you get the feel for it, it's pretty easy to keep going, but the initial start is the hard part. Let's see if we can do it on the first try. Oh, don't slip off there. There, and as you can see, it's a very slight motion to keep it going, just a little up and down motion. And for flare, we can whoop, bam, catch it, but just give it a little toss up. So like I said, you want it to go the same direction that the bristles are going and little motions once you get it started. Um, other than that, make sure, like I said, that you're using a toothbrush you don't care about or that you do clean off the toothbrush before you use it again. And that is our first trick using the toothbrush. So for this next trick, we are going to be using a cookie sheet. Now I'm using a cookie sheet. When I say we're gonna be using a cookie sheet, I imagine most of you probably have one available, but you can also use a book binder or a book if it's a nice hard book. Uh, pretty much anything that's a flat surface, like a tray or a piece of wood, will work for this trick. And that's going to be padiddling or spinning it on your finger like this. So when we do this, uh, if you watch this video on how to spin a ball on your finger, that's great. I love to hear that people are enjoying the content that we're creating here at Circus Tutorials. But the start is very similar, either the two-handed start or the one-handed start. Um, but the difference is, is rather than catching it right in the center, we're going to catch it off center. So rather than right in the middle, it's going to be off a little bit. And then we are going to be drawing circles around that center point to keep it going. This trick is mostly feel. It does take some practice, but you kind of feel where you need to be after a while. So it's a little circle in the middle. And the circle changes depending on what the tray is doing. So I'm gonna show you again. And another quick trick is if it has edges like this, it's actually easier if the edges are hanging down. It makes it balance a lot better than if the edges are hanging up. So I'm gonna cheat and use the edges hanging down a little bit so I can try to show you some corrections and some uh, errors in fixing those. So once it's spinning at a good speed, as you can see, my finger is pretty close to the center. It's just a little bit off, spinning around to keep it going. So now if I start losing it, my finger is going to need to come out to the outside. I went a little too far out trying to demonstrate, sorry. So my finger is gonna come out to the outside. As it restabilizes, my finger slowly comes in and goes back to the center point where I have the most control. So as it's either as it's slowing down or as it's wobbling. You wanna to go to the outside of the circle. And as it's more stable and fast, you wanna go closer to the inside of the circle, but never quite in the center. You can go to the center and have it spin there for just a second, but really you wanna keep it going and have the control over it. Like I said, this trick is mostly feel, so it does take a little while to get the hang of. Once you get the hang of it, it is a pretty easy trick and you'd be amazed with all the different things that you can padiddle in just your everyday life. Everything from menus at restaurants or even like the little plastic dessert things at restaurants, I've seen people do those. Super great trick, you can do all sorts of fun stuff with it, but we're gonna be covering that maybe in a future video. And that's gonna be trick number two, padiddling a tray. So now I'm going to challenge you all to do the Cobra coin catch. For this, all we need is a couple coins. 
and I'm using coins as an example. Realistically, you can use anything that's small enough to catch multiples in your hand and that you can balance on the back of your hand and armed to set up. So what the trick is, is we have them set on the back of our hand and then we're gonna toss them up in a single motion, but catch them at different times in an overhand snapping motion. Thus how it gets the name, the Cobra Catch. So I'm gonna show you right now with two, catching the one closer to my wrist first, then fingertips. One, two, just like that, catching them at separate times. So obviously the most important thing here is speed and accuracy. Gotta be able to catch them accurately and quickly, especially once we start doing more. But then the next most important thing is spacing, making sure that they're spaced out enough that we can catch them. Because obviously if they're too close together, we're gonna have run into the possibility of catching two at the same time, or as we catch one, sending one flying across the room. And obviously in either case, that doesn't count. We're gonna have to try again. So for good spacing in the air, the first step is to make sure we have good spacing on our arm. So I'm gonna try three for you right now, and I'm gonna set them up just like this. And so I, the one closer to my wrist is going to be the first one, second one, then fingertips is going to be the last one. You might think this looks like a good setup. They're all spaced evenly and it's not bad, but it's also not ideal. The reason for that is because we need this last one in the air extra long because this goes highest and ends up coming down quite a bit faster. So we need this one to have more air time than we need for these two. So it's actually more beneficial to have it spaced something like that to where between one and two, not as much of a gap, but then two and three has quite a bit of a gap. So even though they're spaced differently, we actually have the same amount of time between each coin to catch them. So I'm gonna try with all three. So my record with this trick is actually five. And I think the world record is seven. If it's not seven, I'm gonna put the actual number up here. And if it is seven, I'll confirm it. But if not, the real number will be here somewhere. But I'm gonna try three for you right now. I'm actually sitting down, which actually makes it very, very hard in this current setup. Standing up makes it a lot easier because you can use your whole body to split them up and get a better split. And also you can come down with it to give yourself some more time. Sitting down is actually quite difficult, but I'm gonna try it. So I have them spaced. I'm gonna focus on lifting my arm in a kind of swooping motion rather than just straight up. The reason for this is because it'll help them split better but also it'll put them in a nice vertical line as well. So that way we'll have an easier time catching them. So here we go, trying all three, focusing on lifting. Just like that, all three caught at separate times. So that's going to be the challenge. You try the Cobra Catch for yourself and let me know how many you get down below. And with that, that has been the tutorial. A couple quick little tricks you can learn with some everyday objects, as well as a challenge where you can challenge your friends or siblings in this time we're stuck inside. If you have any suggestions or would like to see any specific future videos, comment those down below. We love hearing your suggestions. As well, if you like the video, do all the YouTube things. We do appreciate that as well. And if you have any progress videos, share those with us on Facebook. We love seeing your videos and we love checking out and seeing what you guys are up to as well. With that, my name is Chuck Clark and this has been Circus Tutorials and we'll see you in the next one. Okay. The one that I got that was fine. <laughs> the video wasn't going. <laughs> okay. You know, this is an easy trick. Standing. Sitting down, it is so hard. <laughs>